Welcome back to Creepy Kitty Creations for the first video of 2023. I mentioned before that I had wanted to make Jarkin when I did Rin's video, so today we're going to be making Jarkin. Now, I don't have any doll bases for this particular type of doll, so let's see what we're going to be doing instead. Let's get started! So I printed off Jarkin in various sizes, but I think this is going to be the right size. Um, and I just lightly drew on uh, some lines as a skeleton in case like you've probably noticed that this is very similar to KP Creations technique that she uses when making her art dolls and that is exactly who I learned it from I've been binge watching her videos and that that's what made me really want to make an art doll of Jukin so we'll be making him from scratch using the same art doll techniques that KP uses for her animal art dolls. It's a bit tricky because there's no pictures of him with his arms outstretched. They're sort of curled up so I had to kind of guesstimate a little bit what his arms look like. So we're going to take some tin foil and make it roughly his head shape. Not exactly because we're going to build it up with clay. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller than it needs to be. And I got the perfect colour clay for his skin so I'll be using that. And I should have used baking paper because it got stuck to the to the uh, cutting board. So use baking paper. Now I'm just going to cover it, the tin foil with the clay, just to get a basic shape. And we'll start sculpting from there. I, I tried to give him a bit of a neck, but not really working out. <laughs> I didn't have any of the glass cabochons for his eyes, so I just made them out of polymer clay. So I made a circle and then cut it in half with a craft knife, and then just smushed them back into shape. And we'll bake those first, because I want them to be hard when I put them in, onto his face. So I'm just going over it with some of the um, Sculpey product that gets rid of fingerprints and now they'll, but they're baking in the oven. So while we wait, I'm going to make his ears. This is really my first time properly sculpting with polymer clay so I was, I was quite nervous but it was fun. And for his other ear. I found though that I'm very heavy handed so I just kept squishing things. Now we're also going to make the staff of two heads so I'm taking a bit of uh, wire and just covering it with clay and two little um, circle bits of clay at the top as a base for the heads. Very very rough at this stage. At this point I was having to just keep thinking trust the process, trust the process because it kind of looks like crap. <laughs> now just covering the wire in a little bit of clay. So I really wanted to do this as a bonus video because Jacken wasn't really on the wheel. But when I made Rin, it's like, well, it doesn't really feel right without Jacken. So, bonus video it is, <laughs> and I knew he was going to be a bit different because he's being sculpted right from scratch. So the eyes have been baked and they're just cooling off now, so I'll finish what I'm doing with the staff of two heads. I'm just using a rubber tool to sort of dig in and make a wood grain pattern in the staff, which is a little time consuming because the clay's very soft because it's been quite warm here in New Zealand, and I kept squishing it and making, like having to redo sections. But maybe it would have been better to have a firmer clay? I don't know. I like that this was easy to work with because um, it's really easy on my fingers. I'm not having to mix it like the dreaded milly putt. And here we go. So 
So those unfamiliar with the anime, the Staff of Two Heads is Jakin's weapon of choice given to him by Lord Sishomaru. The, I think the old man, his mouth opens and he can spit out fire, which is really cool. So I'm starting to sculpt the woman here. Um, she is a Heian era styled lady, so she has her hair parted in the center with a little bit of a fringe and with the little circular eyebrows. Although she has a varying amount of detail on the anime, sometimes she's just sort of a blank face with a few dots and other times she's really quite detailed, so I freely admit I struggled with her. Faces are hard. <laughs> So she's done it now I can start working on the old man and I struggled I try I put on all the lump of clay and just tried to work the details into the clay and it just didn't work so I pulled the whole thing off <laughs> start again just make it into a little tiny base circle thing because I think he's gonna be a lot easier to sculpt after this is baked so that I'm not squishing the woman's face I could just feel every, like his the old man's face is so detailed. I was just squishing everything. So we're gonna bake this first. Re-adding in some of that texture that I squished out of place. So seriously, so heavy-handed. So while those bake, we're going to go back to his face. So the eyes are hard now, so I can just pop them into place and slowly just work around them to build up his face shape which was a lot harder than I thought <laughs> several stages he starts looking pretty cursed So um, all of this is sort of techniques I've picked up from watching, well, binge watching KP Creations videos. Um, while I was recovering from COVID, I think I watched like her entire channel's worth of videos. <laughs> Some of them more than once, like her cute little um, mushroom one, I think. I swear I watched that like five times in one week. Um, her sculpting is amazing and it's so informative too. So that really helped with sculpting Jakin's face. I'm pretty much just using these um, silicone silicone rubber um, tools to smooth things out and just move them into place. I end up redoing his nose like several times because his mouth beak thing was really quite hard to get the right shape. So Jakin is a type of yokai that they I think it roughly translates to like an imp which are these kind of lizardy looking uh, creatures. And he only has like three fingers, so I'm really not looking forward to sculpting that. <laughs> I hate hands. So this is mostly just about building up clay, getting... I wanted him to look like he does in the anime, but also a bit realistic, but not like too realistic. So that that was that was kind of a hard balance. And we all know that ja Master Jakin would not be who he, he is without those little frown lines. <laughs> I 
I kind of almost stopped at this point because he looked, I just thought like, this is not going well. It's getting about to the right shape, size and shape head, so I'm going to stick his ear on now and just sort of work that into the clay so that it doesn't fall off. I'm just using one of the sharper tiny tools to sort of just dig in the shape of his mouth in there. By this stage he kind of looks like an evil Donald Duck. <laughs> Let's have another try at his nose. Look here. I made this ear and totally forgot that it was an ear and just mixed it into the clay to make his other eye eyebrow or eyelid. Um, so I'm going to have to make another ear. It's using the Sparticle Particles Creepy Kitty. Now we're just doing the same thing on this side as the other side. Hopefully getting it symmetrical. <laughs> or at least pretty, pretty symmetrical. just building up under his chin a little bit not quite the right shape so I think from start to finish sculpting his face and his hands and his feet took about four hours oh and the staff of two heads or maybe including that, it was closer to five or six. So it, it took took a fair amount of time, especially because it's my first time doing proper sculpting like this. He's starting to look a lot less cursed now, and a bit more like Jacken. <laughs> Making a new ear to replace the one that I smushed. Now I'm just covering his face with the Sculpey 
coating and it gets rid of the fingerprints. I can't remember what it's called. Is it? It's not liquid sculpey. It's something else. So this is where we are. And it was around this time that I realized I hadn't sculpted his hands or feet, so I kind of need to do that before I bake. I want to do. I want to get as much baked at the same time as I can. So head, staff, hands, and feet. So let's sculpt his feet. He's just got two little toes. Relatively simple. Most of his legs going to get covered up by his pants, and that's all baked and hard now. So that's his head done, and it's about the right size, I think. And here are his feet, and that's all attached to the wire, so that he should be poseable. Well, need to do his hands now. I've put it off for too long. <laughs> so just putting a little bit of um, the Sculpey Bacon Bond. And spoiler alert, it didn't really work very well. I ended up, um, one of the hands fell off and I ended up having to super glue it on. But live and learn. Please don't judge me too harshly on these hands. They're really bad. I... I need to, I'll, I'll do better next time. But yeah, like I, something about, like I know the three fingers is actually very similar to the five when you just sort of have the index finger and the finger next to it sort of mushed together as one. But for some reason, I found this really, really hard to do. I like, I even had references up, but it was just so hard. <laughs> So now we'll sculpt the old man on the staff of two heads, which I really wasn't looking forward to. He's got quite a lot of detail on him and a very particular shaped face with like chubby cheeks. So um, I ended up sculpting most of it off camera because I was getting really nervous. <laughs> so this is what he looks like. So he's got those wee eyebrows and his little mustache and a big nose and some quite defined cheeks so I'm just putting on his wee beard now and when I was editing I realized I forgot his ears um, but that's okay I'm just using the um, hard tool to draw lines in the clay to make it look like hair and then just sort of mixing it onto his head so that it will bake nice and hard and fully attached to his head And the same for the other side. And he wears this little this little hat just like Jarkin, so make his little hat. And I used the bacon bond as well. This one worked a lot better. And I decided that the, um, the sort of twirling bit at, uh, that connects them wasn't quite defined enough anymore, especially because I already decided I want to brush out some yarn for the lady's hair that's going to twist around. So I thought that hair is going to be quite bulky, so I really need to work up one of these twists to be bulk out a little bit more. So just doing that, again with some bacon bond. I'm much happier with how he came out than she did. So now we're going to do a few base coats on Jarkin's eyes because he has bright yellow eyes. I actually end up buying some thicker consistency paint because that just really, really wasn't doing much. And I know it's bad and there was probably a much better way to do this, but I end up hot gluing uh, him together. So his, um, his torso to his legs and feet and then his hands and arms to the torso wire. There will be a much better way to do this but, but this is this was the best I could think of because this wire doesn't really twist around itself very well and I'm quite bad at that especially on this tiny 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 scale. Um, if it was a bigger art doll I probably could have done all the twisting but um, at this at the scale it, it was it didn't want to work. <laughs> so.
so at this stage he's quite poseable the glue is holding everything in place I'm doing several layers after it cools because I really don't want him to come apart he's about the same size I made his hands way too big and they look really really weird sorry about that I didn't have any quilt batting so I'm just using this sort of it's, it's from a pillow the like pillow fluff fiber so now right he looks a bit like a sheep but we'll fix it we'll fix it I've got some of this fabric that I'm going to twist around to make everything flat kind of like a mummy <laughs> But surprisingly it, it works so this is a really good al alternative if you can't get quilt batting um, just use the fibers from a pillow and then use a thin bit of fabric like this and just keep wrapping 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 and it will condense all of that pillow fluff more and look more like the quilt batting so cheap alternative Here we go, just use a wee dab of hot glue on that last bit and we have a body for Jakin that's poseable. So I'm just going to paint it the same colour as his, or almost the same colour as his skin um, so that it's not quite such a stark contrast because I'm sure you're going to be able to see some of it um, peeking out through his kimono sleeves. And there we are. I'm going to do a base coat of brown paint on the staff of two heads just to sort of just cover that green. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect, we'll be doing a fair amount of dry brushing afterwards. And now to add some yellow to his eyes. I wasn't very happy with how it all laid out. It was, you could still see the brush strokes. So I'm just going back in with a darker yellow around the edges and a white and just making, making that look a bit um, more three-dimensional and much thicker and like an actual eyeball. <laughs> And uh, just getting a lighter brown and dry brushing, bringing out all that nice sculpting that took so long to do. <laughs> dry brush, it's quite amazing how much of a difference dry brushing makes. Look at the details on the old man's face, I'm really happy with that. Dry brushing is seriously like magic. And just painting his eyebrows and hair a sort of grey, darkish grey, white.
I tried to sort of draw on her face a wee bit, but it didn't go very well. <laughs> the old man definitely came out a lot better. I'm just going over with a black wash, which is just that pa black paint watered down and just dabbing it off. And then just dry brushing over top because it went a little bit too dark. And that's the staff of two heads almost done. So at this point I moved on to the clothes. I'm trying to do it in the order that I made it. Um, I was a bit all over the place. <laughs> so first we're sewing the front together. It has a seam down the middle so I wanted to include that. And now we'll stitch the front side to back side, stitching along the shoulders. I would show you how I made the pattern but I will be brutally honest, I totally eyeballed it. <laughs> so now we'll take the sleeves and pin those to the shoulders. And we're just going to stitch not all the way down but part way down. But I need to sew long enough to fit his hands through, thinking about the opening in uh, the, the armhole. So just going to stitch along here on both sides. I've already cut the wee little peekaboo slits in the sleeves. So that's all done there. First we need to figure out how long the sleeve is going to be. It needs to be neatened, so we just try that on for size. Yeah, that looks good. And the same on the other sleeve. Looking good. So we'll just stitch along there. And he's also got some decorative uh, yellow thread or embroidery along his sleeve. So I'm just doing that on the sleeve that I've, I've done ahead of time. But don't worry, I'm going to go back and explain how I did it. It's looking very jarkin-y. So how I did that is I'm just top stitching the sleeve which is where you fold it over and do a line of stitching sort of going into that seam allowance so that it's it, li it lays flat. I'll go into more detail when I do a video on sewing. I'll do it on fabric where it's easier to see the stitching. So now I just have to neaten the edges of this wee opening. I know that there's probably a much more technical way to do it and a correct way to do it for this particular style of kimono, but at this particular scale I really needed to just go with what looked correct or what the final product looks like because trying to make it in the way that it's traditionally and properly made, I think it would probably have ended up way too bulky. So I'm just folding that over and carefully sewing a hem just around there. And once that's done, instead of cutting my thread, I place a bit of white fabric underneath and start stitching that down following my line of threads that I did for the hem. Normally this white bit would be the under kimono and it would be peeking through the wee uh, opening in the outer kimono but that would have been way too bulky so I sort of had to flub it a bit. And we just tie a knot and cut that off and we have the finished sleeves. 
So now I'm going to top stitch this seam at the front. I thought I could get away with without doing it and just pressing it, but it wasn't sitting flat enough. So I think top stitching is going to be the MVP of this particular project. <laughs> Much flatter. Now I just need to neaten the edge for the collar here. There we go. And with good sides to good sides, well, uh, I like to fold it in half first to get a little crease so I know where the center is. Line that up with the seam on the front and then just pin it around the neckline which looks really tricky. It's, it's a little bit fiddly. And we're just going to stitch that together. And now it has a collar. I'm really pleased with how this has come out so far, especially considering I just eyeballed it and kind of guessed, uh, guesstimated the sizes and things. So I dyed this fabric with coffee because I didn't have any the right color and I started making them and spoiler alert, I end up having to do the pants off, off camera because, well for, the, for starters I actually forgot how to make pants. <laughs> It was weird I can make really complicated dresses but pants just baffle me so I actually had to look up how to make pants again so I made these ones off camera because I was getting really stressed <laughs> nothing wanted to work everything was going wrong but these ones came out really nice so those first ones that I showed you I got about this much done sewed most of them together and I was about to do the outside seam when they were just way too small and that's not enough gather so that was fail and so I made a second pair and I tried to gather it and well they were too short so another fail so I, I, I eventually came up with these I had wanted to use elastic but I ended up just gathering and tucking it under so we're gonna stitch on some domes here so that they have a fastening and I think these ones will work a lot better. It's a shame I couldn't show you how I made them. But um, yeah, I went through three different patterns. So the jumper, the jacket came out good just eyeballing it. But the pants, the pants did not. Pants are hard. It's looking really good though. So I just need to neaten around these seams here. Normally he'd have a little belt that sort of tucks around it and, and make that jacket puff out but that was a bit hard at this scale so I just ended up neatening around everything without the wee little belt thing. So now it just needs some domes. And the outfit's done. I'm really pleased with how it came out. It looks, it looks good. Even if his hands are way too big. So I made his hat off camera because it didn't turn out well. And I don't want to, I don't want to send you down the wrong path of showing you how to not make a hat. Um, so clean off my brush. I really need to get better at cleaning my brushes. So I'm just going over with a bit of pastel and some yellow Pearlex powder on the eyes. And then just going in with some brown pastels to give some shading to his face. At first I wasn't sure if the step was needed and I thought well shading always makes everything look better. So I went ahead and did that and yeah it really does. So this was a, this was a very uh, unconventional type of face up.
I sketched these on with watercolour pencil first because I knew that I wouldn't get them right the first time and I didn't. So I just erased that and tried again. That was way too off to the right. That looks a bit better. Definitely quite cartoony though. So I'm going to go in with some black pastel. And see if we can make this look even a little bit more realistic. certainly done something but I still wouldn't say overly realistic so I'm going in with a little bit of I think this one's blackish brown and then going in with some red because it's like I mean red all eyeballs have a little bit of red so just trying to add a bit more dimension I actually ended up googling some pictures of lizard eyes just to give me a bit of a helping hand on what these might look like. <laughs> now just going in with some darker browns just to really get, get that detail in there. And then going in with a light green pastel to do the highlights. I thought his, his eyes still don't look really 3D enough, so I'm going in with some browns, a little bit of black, and just really trying to add dimension to that. Again, using the lizard, the lizard eyes as a reference. And I think they look a lot better. They, ma they, they match his face a bit better, I think. So with the big brush I'm using a light brown and then going in with a darker brown with this finer brush. And then adding in some yellow pastel again in the places where it ended up a bit dark. And I think he's about done. Now I didn't add any catch lights to his eye because we're going to use some UV resin like KP uses on hers. I, I really wanted to try this. Uh, they get a really nice shine and oh my gosh this works so well. I'm really tempted to try it on my next doll on its eyes because they're just so glossy. They look so real. I love it. Trying not to get it on his skin, it was the hard part. So he, then he goes into the UV light, which I actually ended up doing for about 5 to 10 minutes because I really didn't want him to, the eyes to be sticky. And I made these little tiny wefts off camera and brushed out some yarn for the staff of two heads female hair. So I did this while he was cooking in the UV light. Just using some, um, I think this is just normal craft glue. But pretty much doing it exactly the same as I do with my doll, wi doll, doll wigs. Ugh, can't speak. <laughs> it was really, really hard at this scale. I mean, I thought wigs for dolls were, could be hard enough. But at this teeny tiny scale, this was just insane. And trying to get it to lay flat.
I'm just glow and like adding some of the glow along the wee little twists where I want her hair to wrap around. I need just enough glue to keep it in place, but not so much that it will actually show through the yarn. Which was a bit tricky. <laughs> it either didn't want to stick or was sticking too much and showing through. And it turned out that just the wefts alone weren't long enough, so I had to keep adding them and trying to make them look like they're just one long length of hair, which worked out okay. Again, the lady is Heian era style, and Heian era ladies wore their hair very, very long. Most of them, they were either to their feet or dragging along the floor. So she has a little bit of hair that just sort of hangs down but the more I looked at the picture I was like well that's it's actually quite a long piece so that wee little short bit really wasn't doing it for me so I ended up adding on another length of hair. I'm doing her parting the same way that I do all the wigs sorry it kept getting blurry here. Really didn't want to sit flat so I just got some glad wrap, wrapped it around her head and um, just put a, a rubber band around it to help it lay flat for a bit so I left it like that for about an hour before going back. It's sitting much flatter now but she looks like cousin it. <laughs> so she needs a haircut. Let's cut those bangs and hopefully they'll lay flat. If not we'll go back to the glad wrap. But first she needs a wee little snip snip for her fringe. And Heian Air ladies also have what they now call the Hime style hair, which is where you've got the fringe that goes down to your, to your eyebrows, but then another wee longer bit that isn't as long as the rest of your hair, but, but really blunt cut um, to about your cheekbones. And just adding some glue to get this to lay flat and trying to blend it in with the other hair that's wrapping around the staff. It really didn't want to stick. And as you can see, her fringe is sticking up and looks crazy wild so we'll have to employ the glad wrap again uh, with a little bit of water just dab dabbing that on with my finger and just stick that back on and I think I left that for another hour or two just to make sure that it was going to stay flat And he's done! So this is the wee little hat that I made off camera.
I originally had the wee strap on the hat but now I'm just fastening it with blue tack because it sat a lot better. And we have Master Jarkin from Inuyasha. Hand sculpted and made from scratch. I'm really happy with how he came out. He goes so well with little Rin. I can't wait to see Rin and Jarkin with Seshomaru. We'll see who we're spinning, who we get on the wheel next, but I'm just so looking forward to seeing the three of them together. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that you're looking forward to the rest of the Inuyasha Wheel of Fortune series. Don't forget to like the video if you like the video. Subscribe and hit that bell if you want to see who we'll be making next. Bye!